Recently, I played through Halo Combat Evolved with the help of a friend, and we both went insane during the second half. The following is a completely accurate summary of the campaign. Trust me. The game begins where Halo Reach left off, with the Australian space squad approaching a mysterious space ring. The aliens don't want the ass on the ring, so they send some boarding parties to have a picnic aboard the Pillar of Autumn as a distraction, but everyone's still a little pissed off at them for being bad sports about Planet Australia, so Captain Exposition wakes us up from our nap early. Dustin Echoes, John's imaginary friend, shows up next to him and it turns out that when you're playing co-op, the host is actually the fake Master Chief, so I'm the hallucination from waking up early out of stasis. After our tour guide explodes, we're left to wander about the ship on our own and stumble our way to the bridge, where Captain Exposition lets us know that we have to join in for the fight of our lives because he's going to immediately crash the ship on the ring. He hands us a pistol that he doesn't keep loaded for... reasons. It's just a prop to intimidate the bridge crew, I suppose. He's like, make the fucking blind jump, Moran! He's like, but I don't know how to do that! I'm really a pacifist. Then we make our way off the ship by murdering every single alien between us and the escape pod because our brain damage has thrown us into a homicidal rage. A marine just now notices that the ship that's been fired at for the past 10 minutes has taken some damage, and it careens past us as we get closer to the ring. Our pilot wasn't certified to crash land an escape pod, so everyone inside is killed when we slam into the ground because we don't take a seat and just ping-ponged around the inside of the cabin. We stroll through some low-poly fields and assist some marines until Fohammer drops us a puma that we drive into a joke that literally every Halo YouTuber ever has made, so I'll just skip right past that. After assisting several more groups of marines and killing anything that stands in our way, our uber picks us up so that we can go rescue Captain Exposition who got himself captured because he gave us his only weapon back on the Pillar of Autumn. We sneak our way loudly through a few waves of aliens before coming across a space ladder. I mean elevator. So we ask the aliens nicely to borrow it for a moment. Just kidding, we murdered it. After inviting along some cannon fodder, I mean friends, we take the elevator and then spend the next 20 minutes dying our way through copy-pasted hallways so that we can rescue Captain Exposition, listen to him exposition dump, and then run back through the same hallways. There's a time jump, and now we're riding in the back of an Uber getting ready for an assault on the... No, hang on, that's the next level. Getting ready to play the best level in the entire franchise. We touch down on the beach and slaughter some tourists before regrouping to try to shove a warthog into a place it definitely wasn't meant to go because it's a Halo game. Then we die, so we just walk instead. After unlocking the door, we commandeer another warthog that the marines definitely weren't going to be using anytime soon, and shove that one into a place that it definitely wasn't meant to go because we're still playing a Halo game. I try skipping a section by falling down and do it on the first try. First try. First try. First try. First try. First try. Cortana lets us know that she's located the location of the next location, so we can make our way back outside and get an Uber ride there. Turns out it's underground, so our Uber driver just drops us off wherever, and then we have to walk the rest of the way just to make our day miserable. After dying our way to the control room, We find out that Captain Exposition is in trouble, again, so we run off to find him immediately and can't spare a single second so that Cortana can tell us what the hell's going on. Cut to a swamp and a land far, far away. Some the aliens are running away from something lurking in the dark, but we're not really concerned because we're a seven foot tall walking tank and a hallucination of a seven foot tall walking tank. We creep our way through the fog and head into an abandoned theater because the last time anyone set foot in one was over nine months ago in March. We come across an employee that was accidentally locked in before it closed and he's gone a little crazy, so we ask him politely to calm down. It turns out that less employees made it out than we had thought, and we watch a recording of what the heck is going on only to find out that all of the theater's popcorn has mutated into angry flesh-eating zombie spores, and that Captain an exposition is almost definitely dead from being eaten. We fight our way back outside and meet the mascot of the company that took over the Halo series in 2011, and it starts to make a lot of sense why Halo went downhill after that. 343 Industries steals us from our marine buddies and just leaves them to die, so that we can run through a library because we're sure as hell not going to try reading anything because everything looks really blurry due to the brain damage from cryo. And now we get to slog through the library. This is easily the worst level in the entire Halo franchise, hands down, so I'm not even going to try to make jokes for this section. Enjoy the death montage. Oh my god, there's so many carrier four. I'm at one health. Oh god, please. Oh god. No! My death.
Also, it turns out that even though this level felt a lot harder and longer, <laughs> we actually died a lot more on assaults on the control room. 343 Industries teleports us back to the control room and gets in a fight with Cortana, where it's revealed that the halo ring that blows things up would actually blow all of us up at once, and that's not good for our plans of not being dead. So 343 Industries betrays us, and that's actually the only betrayal in this level, even though the level is called Two Betrayals. After easily dispatching 343's death squad, we make our way back outside to do the entirety of Assault on the Control Room backwards, but interrupted with sections where we're forced to lower our shields because the Halo Ring is allergic to our body. Cortana thinks Captain Exposition is still alive somehow after all this time when he was clearly ambushed by Mutant Popcorn, so she teleports us back to the Truth and Reconciliation so that we can go backwards through that level too. We attempt suicide so that we don't have to go through the rest of this level, but unfortunately we survive by falling into some radioactive sludge. After struggling our way through a field of popcorn, We take the same elevator from earlier and go back through the same exact hallways as we did in this mission the last time, and finally catch up to Captain Exposition, who looks a little bit more like a baked potato than a ship captain. We smash his head completely in so that we can take his vaccine microchip and plug it into our head to listen to the captain's bootleg mp3 collection. We steal a banshee and fly off to the last repeat level, where we go backwards through the Pillar of Autumn that looks surprisingly intact for having crash landed into a desert. After crashing into the Pillar of Autumn for shits and giggles, you did that on purpose, didn't you? We slaughter our way through a bunch of squatters that try to take refuge inside the ship. We make it to the bridge and plug Cortana back into it, but 343 Industries shows up and tries to kill us, so we hatch a plan to throw comically large grenades into the ship's reactor to blow up Halo so that the aliens can't have fun with their giant hula hoop, and 343 Industries can cry about their blown up death laser for two more games. After blowing up the reactor, we take an elevator to a room full of Pumas that we use to drive three kilometers horizontally across the Pillar of Autumn, stopping briefly on a small bridge that a spaceship has for some reason, so that we can watch our uber get shot down by empty banshees. Surprisingly, we actually drive through this whole section without flipping the warthog over once, and even earn the achievement for doing it because we'd actually never done that before. I die at literally the last possible second before the end, but luckily Heaven is able to get to the trigger and we finish the game. John takes the longsword and flies off Halo, where Cortana remarks that we left Dustin Echoes behind, but that's okay because just like Johnson, he survives and we'll see him again in Halo 2. Oh wait, you can see his helmet! I just noticed! You can see that his helmet doesn't come off in that cutscene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Game over.